because we're in the service industry, even though I'm not in the service, I don't know what all you are doing, but I'm not in the service industry. You're not a service provider. I, I'm an artist and you're paying me that way. Hi everyone, I'm Sid Sharice. And I'm David Bosher. And you're listening to Destroy the Hairdresser. Where we teach you to salon differently. If you are still using a front desk in your salon, it may be time to future-proof your business with Aura Salonware. Aura allows you and your team to check clients out from any device. That means there's no need for a front desk or front desk overhead. What's even more amazing is that clients can check themselves out using the Aura app from their own device. With Aura Salonware, you can finally let technology streamline your business. Start removing your front desk today by visiting aurasalonware.com slash DTH to receive special discounts and promos. Are you exhausted trying to get your team to understand the cost of product use? Let's jump into the future with Salon Scale. Have more proactive conversations with real numbers that can help create less waste. Salon Scale software is a pro stylist app that gets your team educated on the real costs of doing business. Salon Scale is a great solution for wasting less color and making more profit. Visit salonscale.com slash DTH and use code DTH10 at checkout for 10% off. Okay, so it made me think about this, especially because you were making fun of my boots. About how important dress can we get a salon- Can we get a... Z- First off, these boots are hot. Can we get a zoom in on the boots? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. For anyone who's watching, Sid's boots are deadly. I don't know how What's to... the difference between those and like someone who wears like weighted ankle workout uh, bracelets? Oh, that's... It keeps my quads like fire. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty heavy, but they're so cute. But it got me thinking about the insane rules that we have around dress code in salons. And we've really broken <laughs> out of it, but it it got me... So I actually got to visit one of... Um, our Future Proof Salon's Goldenrod Parlor in Gainesville recently. And I don't think about dress code at all anymore because we have so much freedom in our DTH salon. So it's not even like something that I feel necessary to talk about. But I'm looking around and I'm looking at all our stylists and how like some of them are coming in like shorts with like crop tops and like, you know, flannels tied around their waist. And some are having so much expression in their hair and like the accessories. And some are coming up in like really with like pantsuits and 17 inch heels. And I was just like, this is what it should be like. Like having that freedom for stylists to express themselves without these arbitrary, arbit- oh my God, what did I just arbitrary. say? Arbitrary. Okay. That's right. I feel like my tongue got caught on the roof of my mouth and it came out. Arbitrara. Like you were eating Wonder yeah, Bread? Yeah, like I was eating cherries. and Eating cherries? Yeah, like I felt like... Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the coffee. I'm like spazzing eating out. Eating cherries? What is that? <laughs> like you have cherries and you're like mumble mouth. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Like is I could have said marbles. Thing? Yeah, I would say marbles. Oh, you would? I would not. <laughs> cherries. <laughs> so it's got cherries in your mouth. <laughs> I am still surprised that salons have, I forget. That's what I'm saying. That like the world still does that. The, and I love this too. One of our coaches was talking about this of like, <laughs> and he sent us a picture and I was like, oh my God. But he was, he. I forget the salons will be like, okay, well, we don't have to just wear black. You can wear white or gray as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember working for a they salon. They all look like a cult. Like, Listen, I remember working for a salon. As we're wearing all black right now. I wear all black because... I mean... I don't feel like trying. <laughs> That's why. But I I remember working for salons where you... Well, it was all black. And then like, it came, then it was like, okay, you can wear gray. Yeah. Or you can wear a, a spicy shoe. You... <laughs> You know, you all black, but your shoes can be a different color. And then it was, you can wear jeans, but you can't, they can't have holes in them. That was another big one. And it's funny because all these people that hate drag queens are requiring people to dress up every day a certain way. And it's like, it's all drag at some point. Everything is. When I live in New York City and I watch all the douchebag, like, uh, Wall Street guys, I'm like, they're all just dressed up as a character. Oh, for sure. The Wall Street character. Yeah. They're dressed up as a businessman. An NPC. Right? As an called? NPC, yeah. as a drag artist. Yeah. Okay, like he's playing Today, a role. Today, I am on Wall Street. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm a surfer bro 
this on the beaches shirt says I know hedge Money. funds. Yeah. <laughs> this tie <laughs> means business. But that's that's what it was. I remember, you know, when I first became a hairdresser, it was like you wear all black so you stand out. Oh no. That's what I was, I was told, told you wear all black so you the client stands out. That was I don't remember that. I was told that both of those suck. Because you're a service provider, like a waiter, I'm supposed to disappear. <laughs> into the background while the the client <laughs> takes all the and I don't know if you've met a hairdresser that's just never gonna happen that's just, just not what our industry is yeah and I remember you know I grew up with a dad who's he, he's an entrepreneur and he always taught me to like be professional dress professionally and I had to work but what is professional young. but when it you grew up on a farm in northern Michigan it was wearing a suit and going to work and whatever but in my like, there was a part of me that when I became a hairdresser that I liked the professional look because it allowed it. I felt like I could take myself more seriously. Mm. So I liked wearing blazers to work and I liked, like, it made me feel good. Um, Let me tell you something someone can wear a blazer and be a complete asshole. I guess I just professionalism to me. You're I don't wearing even, a blazer right now. And I'm an asshole. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what professionalism is because it really varies. On opinion. So if I feel you, like I professionalism is just know, made up. It is. It's patriarchal and racist. Mm-hmm. I mean, doesn't we don't have to go yeah. any further. Uh, absolutely. And sexist. <laughs> it's misogynist. Yeah, it's misogynistic. There's all these things that we've kind of like made up that are acceptable. And artists have always kind of, you know, especially like fashion artists and fashion designers, like no one ever clocks what they're wearing. Mm-mm. And it's like, you can't wear that. Yeah. But as hairdressers, because, oops, I hit my mic. Because we're in the service industry, even though I'm not in the service, I don't know what all you are doing, but I'm not in the service industry. I'm not a service provider. I, I'm i an artist and you're paying me that way. But if you are a service provider, then you're going to be treated like you have to you're going to be treated with all this bullshit of you have to dress a certain way and you have to disappear and you can't take off. The client's always right. It's like, and dress code is one of those things that anchors that belief system. Like you wear it. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I just, I can't believe it's still a thing. I, when it I hear it me. currently from like students that come to us and they're like, oh yeah, we're not allowed to wear A, B, and C. I'm just like, what? Clothes are made for protection against weather. And also self-expression. So it's like, especially if we sit there and we embrace this whole idea of like our industry is cultured as artists, and then we're going to put all these limits on our self-expression through our clothing. Right. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to talk about Sarah a lot in this episode, so you're welcome. But also, <laughs> I'm like, and her team a little bit, because I, I love them. It was so much fun being with them. But um, one of her stylists, when she was first hired... And if you if you know, it, oh, what? can I say your name? She was you, on her show, but no, just, okay, whatever. You know who you are. You know who you are. But she came in fully like dressed up in a professional like suit, Love and that. Sarah, the salon owner, was like, "You don't have to." Oh, she didn't. She came like that's what she thought she was supposed exactly. to. Exactly, and oh. Sarah was like, "If you you look great." But I just want you to know that there is no dress code. And like the next day she was in like her normal attire. <laughs> and that's so cool of a moment to just, I think hairstylists don't believe it when they really meet a DTH salon owner or, or walk into a DTH Hairdress salon. And salon owners don't believe anything that we say <laughs> and then until they're, they're in coaching. They're just like, they're, they're always waiting for the trick and there is no trick. You can wear what you want, you can make your own schedule. Charge it's like when want. we tell people you have unlimited time off and they go, and then they come and tell you they're going to take time off. And I'm like, D- I don't care. I don't care. Did I you don't close care. your books? Cool. I don't Bye. care what you're doing I don't or want where to see you, you are. <laughs> and if you don't come back, I'm just going to put someone else in your place. But I asked I asked on my Instagram, like, what do you want us to talk about in um, our next like recording session? And it came up multiple times with dress code. And I, I laughed weird. because I was like, What? Like, why is this the thing? I, okay, so I'm going to play devil's advocate in a few things here because I do understand that you may have a salon and someone wears something and you're like, I don't want that. Well, I yeah, don't want that. it's your that. business. You can still make a decision. This is where people don't, because we don't know how to communicate and we don't know what we actually want, what we don't want in our business, we create bullshit, like archaic 
we use bullshit archaic terms mm-hmm. like dress code or because you're we don't or unprofessional because we don't know how to say. Hey, don't you can show wear your whatever nipples you, today you, at work. <laughs> like, yeah, we, which also free the nip, but also. It's up well, to the listen, salon owner if, if they want If you want to be a salon owner and you allow nipples to be exposed, then cool. that's fine. But if you want to be a salon, it's probably not fine, like for sanitary reasons. Yeah. But if you want to be a salon owner who doesn't, that's that's fine too. But I think when we say there's no dress code, people are like, well, what if people just come to work naked? You can see their butthole. <laughs> it's like, what Wait. do you... If you hire someone that comes to work naked and you can see their butthole, you need to fire them. <laughs> Said butthole twice on our podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as nipple. Right? Yeah, or it's not. A, it's it's not nip- as fun. Nipple was good, but like butthole is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely drives the point. Home. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. What if you could still give your clients great hair with less products? What if that product line made you money with less inventory on the shelves? What if that product line was also made with gentle ingredients, is biodegradable, and the packaging is refillable? All this may seem impossible, but with Hair Story, it is possible. Hair Story is a brand that is equal parts mindful as it is great hair. Give your clients amazing products while filling your bank account with extra cash. Ready to try new wash for free? Visit hairstory.com slash DTH to get pro access today. When we talk about all these freedoms for stylists, it's because our industry and salon owners specifically, and we love our salon owners, and honestly, we work primarily with salon owners. I mean, I don't love all of them. Okay, fine. (laughs) But the reality (laughs) is that there has been so many restrictions and putting hairstylists into a box that they are fucking fed up and just like thrashing now, you know? And it's just like, there's there's no need for it. The whole Jesco thing is like, because you don't know how to say, please don't wear that. And you think you have to just, I think that's where people get it wrong. Like, they're like, well, I don't have a rule that says they can't. It's like, the rule is you just said they can't. <laughs> that, the rule just got it's created. your business. You, you can, just said it. Yeah. Right? You didn't say it before because you didn't have to. Yeah. And now you said it. I think people forget, like, you can educate. You just have conversations. And have, cl- yeah, you can have conversations and educate as you go. Communication. If I, you know, there there has been times that we've had coaches teach classes and I'm like, can you not wear that? Yeah. Like on the recording of yeah. the class, right? And it's not because it doesn't look good. It's because it. I'm looking at the screen and I'm like, it's not, it's not right for this. And I have the right to say that. Yeah, because it's our business. And I think, but people are so afraid of that that instead they just go, okay, we're all black. Okay, uh, make sure that you're, for women, it's yeah. weird. I, Female I will- dress code. Oh, well, okay, we're going to get that. I will say that our salons have never had an issue with dress code. I've never had to have conversations about dress code ever, and all of them have freedom of expression. And that's the point, too. It's like, just allow it, and if there is an issue, you can solve it. I will say there has been a few. that. Oh, not in... Let me tell you what the main... It's the same one every time. Oh, okay. It's armpits. Oh, well, that's a... Like, I know in, in... Florida, like you had to have your armpits covered, like legally. Well, it's funny because it's all the Florida salons. <laughs> <laughs> What's hot as fuck down there? I don't blame Okay, mom. so again, that's sanitation. This is not. But again, whether or not you want to allow it is still up to you. But you don't have to have a dress code that Just makes like, sure that everyone dresses like a Mennonite so that they don't break yeah, the yeah, dress yeah, code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But. Back to your point about women, I remember multiple, and I, I'm curious in your career how many times people have told you to dress differently as a man, but I have been told, I remember one of our front desk person when I worked in a salon at the front desk, I was very young, this is literally like 10, 12 years ago, and them being like, if you wore costume jewelry, if you really wore more jewelry <laughs> and you put on a lip, you would get more clients. Like, you don't, you're not professional. If you wore costume, costume like jewelry. Like, big, bulky. I'm having a deja vu. I feel like we mentioned this before. Oh, we did. I, I had to have. It still stings. I'm not over it. costume jewelry? Like, at the time, those big, bulky, Who sold those? plasticky the, like, clairs. No, but like, what are the stay-at-home moms that would like sell that cheap-ass jewelry? I don't know. I wasn't into it. But then when I worked <laughs> as an educator, I was constantly told, where's your lip? Put on a lip. If I could tell you how many times I heard, put on a lip, you should put some mascara on. You should put some eyeshadow on. Like, Which is hilarious because now that you love it. Yeah. But, but at uh, the time, I was like, don't <laughs> tell me. Now I like putting makeup on. Like, 
I, but that's my point of like, I feel professional. It's not like I was walking in there like straight out of bed. Like, no, but you weren't female enough. You weren't feminine enough. You weren't, exactly. you weren't fitting the stereotype they needed. I have never been told to yeah. change anything. And that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> I think just Point made. <laughs> just to wrap it up, the idea here is that if you have a dress code, get rid of it. Just see what happens. But that doesn't mean it's a free for all. Yeah. Every person that hears us talk is like, "Well, you just want everyone to do whatever they want, and they're just gonna they're gonna start World War Three. They're creating like, movies before they've even. It's like we're very solution based company. So like, if there's a problem, we will create a solution. But let's just experience. Let's let, something. Yeah, let's let a real problem happen. My Not fav- the made-up one that you're losing sleep over that never happens. And by the way, if you are a female and you have been, what what's the word, criticized to like dress a certain way to salon, it's different. I I know men out there have not been told mm-hmm. about anything. So if you're a female, I would love to hear the story because I think, I think, there's a lot. Or if you're queer, I guarantee you you've been told something. Oh yeah. Again, but probably female presenting because mm-hmm. yeah. male presenting, no. no one gives a shit. Unless you show your armpits, then people have had enough. Flip the fuck out. <laughs> I think just- the moral of the story is like, don't show up naked and with your butthole hanging out. <laughs> Next time on Destroy the Hairdresser, the podcast. Busyness to me is, is truly an illusion because it's this like... Uh, false success.